Boom! Mind Pump time. Welcome to the best fitness podcast in the world. It's Mind Pump. Today's giveaway is MAPS Prime. One of you lucky viewers will get free access to one of the best correctional exercise programs you'll find anywhere. MAPS Prime. Here's how you can get free access. Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. You got to do all those things. If we pick your comment, we will notify you and you'll get free access to Maps Prime. Isn't that awesome? By the way, you're going to love today's episode. We really enjoyed making it. One more thing. We have a special program bundle on sale right now. So we took Maps Anabolic and we combined it with the No BS six-pack formula. We put them together. You can get them both for $59.99. Saves you over $100. If you're interested in signing up for this awesome promotion, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. Hey, so I want to talk about probably the most underrated yet, I, in my opinion, most profound and important effect of proper exercise. I want to talk about the mental and psychological effects of exercise, in particular, the effects that it has on two of the most common, uh, I guess, mental issues or disorders, anxiety and depression. Yeah. Do you, do you think like this, this isn't talked about very much because we are either just learning about a lot of the science around it, or do you think it's because of the dramatic rise in the last decade or two in this current like, climate we're facing right now? Yeah. yeah. Or is it both? You I know? think it's that. And also, you know, because sex sells, what tends to sell fitness oh, is the look right. yeah. the and the physical effects. But I'm going to be very honest here as a, as a trainer. Uh, you know, I trained lots of people for over two decades. I trained people. And I definitely saw people's bodies change. I saw people lose weight. I saw people get stronger, improve their mobility and their performance. But nothing was as impactful or as profound as those e emotional, mental effects that people, uh, you know, felt. That's what people commented on the most. It was, yeah. you know, people love the physical effects. But what people always commented on the most was how it made them feel uh, mentally. Well, veteran yeah. trainers and coaches get this. And yeah. I mean, this, I got this later on, right? Past 10 years into my career, quickly figured out like, I if I could help my clients connect the dots to that, I could control that because mm -hmm. they're coming to see me. And if I could, if I could exercise and train them three times a week, what I can't control is what they put in their mouth. Like yeah. if they follow their macros and they did their, they followed their meal plan, I couldn't control that. So as far as body composition, as great as a coach as I could be, as far as trying to teach them, I couldn't control that. But I could control their exercise and training, which directly impacted this. Right. So if I could get them to make the connection to how much that was improving, I always kept that client. I could always keep them and maybe eventually yeah. get them to change behaviors around nutrition and change the body composition. But I, I, I started to learn like, oh, wow, this is so powerful and I can control some of this as a coach because I'm training them. If I could get them to see the to value, understand yeah. yeah, to understand it and see the value in it, this person could be with Well, it's always a, a tangible metric for really like being able to see personal growth in somebody. So, uh, you know, you know, be able to take them through fitness and have them work on themselves, on their body, you know, that's that in turn then translates into their mental state and their well-being and, and really accepting the fact that they're improving. Well, also, I mean, let's be very clear here. How much does uh, anxiety, mild anxiety, mild depression or mental kind of issues contribute to obesity? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Contribute to not taking care of yourself. So. They're, they're, it's all intricately connected. And we also forget, by the way, we forget that the, the we know that exercise improves our physical bodies, but we forget that the brain is, it our is your body. It, that is yeah. your physical body. And a healthier brain, just like a healthier back or abs or biceps, operates better. It just works better. So, the, and again, this is literally, I'm, I'm, I'm being quite honest, the, Mental effects that proper exercise can really produce in, in a person, I think, overshadow uh, the physical effects. That's how profound it is. And what you said, Adam, is so true because you have to let people know because they often come into uh, you know hiring a coach or a trainer or wanting to work out with no idea that that's even yeah. going to affect that. Yeah. And then they do notice improvements in how they feel, but they always connect it to it's because I look better. It's not necessarily because of that. In fact, mm -hmm. you cannot change how you look yeah. and you'll still get these profound you know, mental effects. I'm trying to actually right now recall if I ever had anybody come to me and go, hey, I want to hire you for training because I have anxiety or depression or I want to work Never. on my mental. No, I don't think I ever. It's always almost 
meant it's always body composition that they're they're seeking out or some performance some goal. health issue or yeah. something that yeah so yeah, yeah doctor said something related to health which is body composition or health performance like mm -hmm. that realm um but ironically this is the thing that i think really kept or turned someone into a lifer like if you were somebody who wasn't really into working out exactly. and fitness this was what if I could make this connection and then we're like, cause they're like, you know what? I'm going to be good and bad about eating my whole life. There's going to be streaks where I'm dieting well and getting ready and in shape. And I might be leaner this year than last year or whatever. But if I start to make the connections that, oh my God, when I am exercising, like I'm a better person. Mm -hmm. I, might, I don't have depression. I don't have anxiety. I'm, I'm more fun to be around. I'm happier. I sleep better. More even temperament. <laughs> Yeah, they start connecting all that stuff and they start to realize like, oh shit, like I can't stop this in my life. This needs to become okay. a part of my life. We need to emphasize that. You talk to anybody who's been exercising consistently for years and years and years and you ask them, what's the number one reason why you're consistent training? I mean, I've been working out since I was 14 years old. So we're talking, you know, well over 25 years I've been doing this consistently it's not for the physical body comp uh, results. I like that. That's great. That's not what keeps me consistent week over week, year over year, decade over decade. It's the mental and emotional effects. It is so profound for me. I've identified that, which is why I'll always do it, which is why I'll do it when I lose strength as I get older. Inevitably, as I get older, I'm not going to perform as well. I'm not going to look as good. It's not going to matter to me because of those other effects. And you talk to anybody who's been doing it a long time. I know people listening right now who've been mm -hmm. exercising for years and years and years they're probably shaking their head in agreeing. That's why they continue to do it. If they've made that connection. Because some people have been training for years and they're still stuck in the, it's all about how I look. Right. And like you said, because I look good, I feel good. Because that's a message. They don't, they don't understand yeah. that. Yes, that helps, but it's also directly affecting yeah. how well, you feel. Well, because there's still some people in the trap of, of trying to fix something about themselves and going into it with like, I'm, you know, I'm insufficient because like I don't look this way or whatever. Like it's a very much of a punishing sort of mentality, which they haven't been able to transition into, you know, why this is actually going to be benefiting me and improving me. Well, and to Sal's point that he made earlier is it, that's just reinforced by all the marketing. Yes. Yep. All the marketing is around sex and, you know, how you look and, you know, be this way in 30 days or 60 days. Like nobody's talking about like, hey, sign up for this year long program and be mentally healthy. No. <laughs> Saying right. that's, that's not yeah. sexy to sell that yeah, and so hard sell. so yeah so you already have these these conditions that people already are, are in and then they're it's being reinforced with the the marketing mm -hmm. so it really takes i think a really good coach or a self-aware person that's doing the work themselves to figure this out yeah. you know now, that, now if you look at just anxiety and depression you're looking at um, and this is people who are reported who actually gone to the doctor and reported it so this the numbers are actually higher than this because i'm sure there's a large percentage of people that suffer from mild to moderate anxiety or mild to moderate depression that never report it. Largely men, but even some women don't report it. But these are the numbers that, that we know of, right? So 20% of Americans suffer from anxiety and 36% of those people never actually get treatment. Okay. So although 20% report it, 36% 36 of that 20 still don't even do anything for it. About seven to 10% of Americans suffer from depression. These are, again, people that report it. So I'm sure that number's yeah. much well, higher. Yeah, and in these days, I'm sure it's even skyrocketed in terms of numbers that Cor they haven't yet yeah, taken into account. So Absolutely. So you're talking about you know tens of millions of people that we know of, but probably twice as many uh, that we don't know of. Now, studies have been done on proper exercise <clears throat> and mild to moderate anxiety and mild to moderate depression. And studies clearly show now that exercise, proper exercise, is as good, at least as good, as medications for treating those, th those things. And many studies suggest that exercise is actually superior, especially when you look at the, the long term. As, this, as they continue going, you start to see even more of a benefit uh, with exercise. So, How recent is that literature? Is that relatively new? I mean, what's... We're, we're looking at the last 20 years, but the last 10 years, a lot yeah. of stuff's coming out. And to the point now where they're considering proper exercise as a first-line treatment. So mm. you go to a psychiatrist or to your doctor, I suffer from anxiety, I suffer... And now in the past, they would say, go outside, try and move. But now they're, they're, they're talking about being more deliberate with it. Like we want you to exercise this many days a week. Mm -hmm. Here's what you're going to do. 
Um, I've even heard talk of incorporating like fitness facilities as part of the treatment. You come here, you meet with somebody who can exercise with you because it's it's so damn effective Do you think at helping that, those things. Yeah, if it's moving this direction and we're seeing this much movement in the last decade that we'll get to a place where insurance will start to cover like personal training. Oh, uh, if they're attached, yeah, to yeah. some kind of treatment, I'm sure. Because I mean, here's the thing. Here's the, the, the truth to me. Is, I mean, uh, absolutely. The, I just I don't ever see it going fully that way unless it is, unless right. there's money to be made. Because right now the doctors make money to prescribe that stuff. That's just how it's work, right? The, with right. The, the with all the pharmaceutical well, I know insurance companies. companies would be for it because it would actually save insurance companies money. An insurance company paying for exercise. Think of all of the side effects of that. That would save them money. They would spend probably less money on. Uh, cholesterol medication for the for the patient. They'd spend less money on surgeries, less money down the road for other medications because of all the incredible benefits that exercise provides aside from yeah. the improvement in their anxiety. I feel like it, insurance would have to accept it and doctors would have to get some sort of a kickback for it to actually work because yeah. that's how the relationship works in the pharmaceutical world right now. Yeah, that's true. Insurance accepts it, accepts it and doctors get kickbacks. So as long as that's in place, I feel yeah. like that will, no matter how much great studies come out to support what you're saying right now, mm -hmm. until we move in that direction, I don't know if it'll ever yeah. be the Here's front Here's the line. good news of all that. The good news of all that is it's very accessible to most people. Right. So unlike a medication that you might not be able to get your hands on unless you get a prescription, or if you don't have insurance, it's just way too expensive, exercise, proper exercise, you could do with zero equipment. We have programs designed around zero equipment, or you could get minimal equipment like resistance bands and a physio ball, or even a pair of dumbbells. And it's very, very accessible uh, to most people. So it doesn't, it's not nearly as inaccessible as prescription drugs. And we're going to go through all the ways that are proven as to why exercise is so effective uh, for these things. That's been proven in studies and also just our experience uh, as coaches. Now, here's the first one, and this one is very interesting. So what do medications do to help with anxiety and depression? Well, we know some of what they do, some of the stuff that they do we, we're not quite sure of, but we do know that they alter your brain and body chemistry, right? This We know that you take a medication, it'll alter brain chemistry or the chemistry in your body, that and that will lead to a change in how you feel. It could reduce the physical effects of anxiety, or it can lift your mood and make the lows not as low and make you feel like you're not so depressed. Well, guess what exercise does? It actually does that as well. It actually changes the chemicals in the brain. I wrote some stuff down here because I actually wanted to make sure I, I looked up exactly what's happening in the body. So exercise is associated with lower sympathetic nervous system and hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis reactivity. Okay, so what does that mean? Those are the parts of the body that react that when you're like fight or flight, right? That, that, that initial signal of, oh my God, I'm anxious. Exercise makes them less hyper reactive, mm -hmm. right? So is that because it kind of normalizes it because you, you get some of that you in your training that stress, I think, and it's, it's not so smaller. foreign is Probably that Probably because you're making that system healthier. Mm -hmm. You're making it react more appropriately. So here's an analogy I'm going to give. That makes sense. It's just like if you were to take the hot cold plunge. It, yes. You know, trains the your immune system, right? Or strengthens your immune system well, because it gets you adapted to be able to go extreme temperatures. Well, here I'll use another I'll use another analogy that um, I think uh, makes sense. Children that grow up on farms around lots of animals and go outside a lot tend to have less allergies mm -hmm. and less autoimmune issues. <clears throat> and the theory is because they're exposed to animal dander and yeah. you know they're outside playing all that stuff that they're in that their immune systems just are not hyper reactive you raise a kid in this hyper clean environment without that stuff their tendency to have allergies is much higher because and what's an allergy it's your it's your immune system being hyper reacting yeah. right so exercise improves the health of that kind of uh, reactivity and it's been shown again in in studies exercise increases <laughs> Serotonergic and noradrenergic, oh, excuse me, noradrenergic, I hope I'm saying that right, levels in <laughs> the brain, similar to the effects of antidepressants. Okay, so serotonin, noradrenaline, other chemicals in the brain, chemical, these drugs that you take to change those to improve how you feel, exercise does similar things to those in the brain. Mm -hmm. Improves serotonin, gives you healthier levels of other chemicals in the brain. We've, we've already observed this uh, in studies. It increases serotonin synthesis, metabolism, and release has been noted following exercise. So what does that mean? There's an acute effect from exercise that's similar to some of these drugs. Now, long-term, this stuff actually starts to get 
better. You also get, so trip off this, it, exercise increases endogenous opiate, opioid activity in the central and peripheral nervous system. Make you feel happy. Like you're taking opiates. Wow. Yeah. So now your body's producing more opiates because you're exercising properly. Um, and that's what gives you that kind of euphoric wow. feeling and reduces pain. Now here, trip off this. Scientists observed this in studies and said, okay, let's give a drug that blocks the effects of opioids in the body just to see if exercise then loses its effect on this. And they did. They gave what are called opioid uh, antagonists uh, to animals or to people, had them exercise. And although the opioid results or effects were blunted, there still was a positive effect on mood. Mm. So what does that tell you? There's a lot more. There's right. more to the story. There's yeah. a lot more that we don't understand. Mm. Uh, Brain-derived neurotropic factor is something that encourages neurogenesis and brain cell growth and you know basically improving the connections that the brain makes. Exercise increases that. It's like they call it like miracle grow or fertilizer for the brain. So now you get this neurogenic effect. Actually, it's like, okay, you build your muscles when you exercise. You also build your brain right. when you exercise. So you, you're creating this, this environment where the chemicals in your body move towards this kind of happier, less depressed, less anxious type of state that we try to mimic with drugs. Yeah. You know, we try to mimic this with medications, but this is happening naturally in the and body. And this is all without anything to do with nutrition, just purely exercise. exercise. Like whether yes. you're in a surplus, deficit, maintenance, doesn't matter. Exercise by itself does all these positive well, it all things. speaks to, you know, the body's built to move. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, all of our systems need to be expressed and need to be moving and, and generating uh, some kind of energy because if we don't use it, it, a lot of times, like, this is where, like, all of all of our problems start to come out of that and we're trying to find out, you know, different chemical uh, ways to, to induce a lot of these systems that we already have that reward us mm -hmm. uh, for moving. And well, so this also shits on my philosophy as a kid when I was a, tra or a young trainer where I was on or off, you know, I, mm -hmm. I used to have this attitude of, you know, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah. I used to be like, you know, if I diet is so important because I was so driven by body composition, you know, body, my diet is so important that if I'm not doing that, then I'm not going to fuck around and work out. And then if I'm going to work out, I'm going to diet. Like I'm mm -hmm. just going to do it. I'm going to do it all or none. And so this totally shits on that because of you still the, get those benefits. Yeah. Because there's incredible benefits outside of where you're at nutritionally that it's something that you should keep in your routine, regardless of what your body composition right. goals are. Now there's a second part to the physical effects that exercise has that then affect your mental health, which is your hormonal health, right? So uh, I'll, 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 I'll ask you, Adam, because you experienced very low testosterone levels after coming off anabolic steroids from competing and you felt low testosterone levels, all other things being equal, how did low testosterone alone make you feel? Oh yeah, terrible and awful. And the only thing that I noticed that when I was doing all the different stuff, right? And I was taking all the herbs and paying attention to sleep. And I mean, we tried everything as far as the, the natural protocols to mm -hmm. help. Well, I was doing the juve line. I was doing all kinds of things to try and support it. Nothing I felt made a bigger difference than when I would just heavy strength train and just moderate amount too. I, I, I recognized really early that it wasn't about intensity and how often I was doing it. Like I needed to do it every day. It was that two to three times a week, if I was strength training, nothing was making my hormone levels, my testosterone levels feel the best than that out of all the other things that I was messing with. Yeah. So, and, and here's what exercise has been shown to do, especially resistance training in particular, it raises the feel good hormones. It lowers the feel bad hormones and it balances things out. So in men, you see a consistent raise in testosterone, whether it's low or even if you have moderate or high testosterone, you see it go up. It upregulates the receptors that testosterone attaches to. It increases growth hormone, which they call the youth hormone. Uh, cortisol is much more appropriate, so it lowers it if it's too high. Mm -hmm. In women, you see a balancing of estrogen and progesterone. Uh, I mean, people get hormone therapy because of how incredible it makes them feel. Exercise promotes these youthful levels of hormones, especially when you do a pro positive tissue form of exercise like resistance training because because resistance training is telling your body to build muscle your body then up increases the build muscle hormones and lowers the break muscle down hormones what are the build muscle hormones these are the feel good youthful hormones the ones that you had when you were younger and all those tear down hormones those ones that make you not feel so good 
Well, those lower because your body's trying to build muscle. So exercise, proper exercise, and in particular resistance training, encourages this hormone profile that is healthy, and your hormones definitely have an effect, definitely have an effect on your mental state. We know this for an absolute fact. I and mean, you talk to anybody who's ever had to take thyroid hormone because they were not producing enough thyroid, mm -hmm. or someone with low testosterone, or a woman who had to take other hormones. You ask them how they felt afterwards when things got balanced out, and they're like, I feel like a completely different person. So those are the two kind of physical types of or ways that uh, exercise can affect the body. Now the rest are, most of them are psychological. And here's, I think, where the real magic is, mm -hmm. is the psychological effects uh, of exercise. These are the harder ones to get people to connect to. They are. It's easier to tell, show somebody physically who they can say, oh, wow, I definitely feel better today. Yeah. But having them connect to the psychological stuff is a little bit more challenging. Right. So the, the, the first one is that in, it encourages, proper exercise encourages being present. Mm -hmm. Being present, uh, look, spiritual practices I think all spiritual practices, all major ones I can think of, talk about being present as a way to calm yourself and to find peace, right? What does that mean? Well, if I'm always thinking of the past, it tends to be filled with regret and shame. If I'm thinking about the future, it tends to be filled with anxiety. What's going to happen? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But right this second, right? Like, for example, right now, sitting in this room with you guys doing this podcast, there is no fear. There is no shame. There is no, because we're here. I'm here yeah, right now. You're, you're in the moment. I'm in the moment. And by the way, being in the moment, I mean, you can experience this doing lots of things. Like if you're a daredevil and you like to oh. skydive, why do you like it so much? Yeah. You are in the moment. That's why people love roller coasters. <laughs> yes. You know, that's why everybody, yeah, that, that has such appeal because um, it really forces you to acknowledge what's right in front of you. And sometimes, and you don't have to go extreme like that. That's what the beautiful thing about exercises, it does uh, require a lot of attention. It requires a lot of systems of the body to react and, and appropriately deal with, you know, this, this level of stress and, and takes all your focus and, and, you know, presses it right into that direction. So it, it is one of those great uh, tools that we have available to just get us in the right mindset right now in this moment. I can't help but think about uh, The Rock talking about this. Are you guys familiar with like his thing that he says whenever he trains? No, what does he say? Oh, you've never seen that? Oh, he, where he yells at everybody. Focus. 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 Yeah. focus. Mm -hmm. That's like his thing. Like he's always talking about. And it, and it is. It's around being present in the moment when you're lifting and being so focused on what you're doing. But there's so much truth to that. Like when totally. you and, and anybody who's ever squatted with three or four hundred pounds on their back or pulled four or five hundred pounds up off the ground. Like you can't be thinking you can't, other things. Yeah, yeah, you right. can't be thinking about yesterday what's or what's tomorrow. Right nah. You one hundred percent this is one of my favorite parts about lifting heavy Same. is it requires that. I can go through a pumping workout and kind of light, you know, going through the motions. Or I can do my mobility thing and be kind of thinking about other things. Not when you're but lifting. when I am training heavy and, and getting after it, I have to be in the moment. There's just too much risk involved. There's too much yeah. potential injury if I'm not paying fully attention to my body and how I'm moving. Yeah. And there's tremendous benefit in training that muscle. There is. And high skill forms of exercise are better at this, which is, I think, why resistance training is one of the best ones because you're doing so many different movements. You have to focus on what you're doing. You're thinking about the lift while you're doing it. And so you have lots of opportunities where you're being present right now, not thinking about anything else the what you're doing. And this has been proven time and time again. This is a meditation. This is what, what meditation does. Meditation is about being present, if I were to generalize it, right? Mm -hmm. And it has profound effects on your and calming your body, making you feel different and better. And it gives you a break. It gives you a break. For me, an hour workout is a break from stress. Right. Because in that hour workout, I'm in that workout. I'm not thinking about anything else. But here's the thing, like idle minds, like it, it, what, what do they call that? What's that quote? Is the devil's idle minds play devil, devil's playground? Right. So it's really hard and challenging for people to be able to sit still and then meditate and focus on just one thing and like yeah. block everything else out, which I think is a great thing to pursue. I think that's tons of value there. But you know, why not uh, do something right away that will get you there uh, when your entire body is devoted and focused on one objective and it has the same effect to that, uh, which then you can kind of build off of that and realize, okay, I can also do this by slowing down and, and, you know, clearing my mind of everything else except for one thing. Well, it's a skill. 
Yeah. It's like anything else. You have to develop it. Mm-hmm. And some people, and I mean, how many times have we gotten messages about that? Like, I've tried to meditate. I can't, I can't do it. You, you know, practice the, it. Yeah. It's a, it's a skill that you have to develop. Some people can go right into it. Some people can sit down, cross their legs, turn the lights off and be in the moment. But some people can't. That's why training and exercising is great because it kind of forces that. Yeah. So if you're somebody who doesn't. You're do, doing something that requires. Yeah. It requires. Yeah. Go do, like I said, go do some heavy loaded back squats or plyometrics for that. Like something that's proprioceptive like that, I think would also encourage yeah. you to be very present right if you're doing jump boxes or ice skaters or a movement that's skill driven like that go do an exercise like that and tell me you're not thinking about just that and nothing else and you're just training that muscle you're training that muscle that part of the brain to know how to do that you'll have a much easier time when you have to learn how to apply that in real life when stress or drama hits you you switch over to that and you can do that but if you never train that you never exercise and then you're you're expected to do that when stress hits you and really tough to do. Now talk about skills that help you with the rest of life. Um, Proper exercise is very empowering because when you're working out, and here's the beauty of of proper exercise, if you do it right, the level of intensity and challenge, it meets your current fitness level, or at least it slightly exceeds it, right? So you need, the way you train, if you want your body to improve and all that stuff, it needs to be hard, right? But what does that mean hard? Well, that means Somebody who's never worked out before, that could be, you know, five sets of body weight squats or five reps, I should say, of body weight squats. That's hard for them. If you're advanced, it's obviously much more than that. Now, why is, how does this encourage empowerment? Well, because you do something hard, you get better at it, and then you improve the intensity or you increase the weight or you do it again and you continue to challenge yourself. And what does it do? This is, by the way, this is how you empower children. The way you empower children is you allow them to overcome challenges and you allow them to overcome harder challenges as they get better and better. And it makes you feel confident. I can handle things. I can do things. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, and I heard this a lot from women, especially from women, the feeling of being physically strong is a very empowering feeling for somebody who's never really felt that before. I'll never forget the client, the female client that I had that used to travel all the time for business come back from a business trip after training with me for a few months and she was almost in tears and she goes, for the first time in years, I lifted my bag and put it in the overhead compartment. She was a real small petite lady. I always had to ask some dude on the plane. Mm -hmm. I did it myself. She goes, you have no idea how empowering that feels. That I know I don't need somebody to help me carry my bags. I can do it myself. Feeling physically strong is a very empowering feeling. And you don't need to be, you know, Hercules. You just need to feel solid and strong in your body. I think it, there's more to that, right? Like, I think, like, let, let's take somebody who's not getting, didn't get stronger, that just uh, lost 100 pounds. The the mental discipline and consistency that it takes, because that's a long journey. I don't give a shit. That's who a you, challenge. It's a challenge. It's a journey. It was something that you had to make a lot of sacrifice in order to do, and you did it. Mm. So if even if even if it's not a strength, because you're right for sure that is empowering as yes. shit. But it can be extremely empowering to just get through that journey of pursuing weight loss mm-hmm. and getting all the way down to that, and that ends up empowering you in other places like because you start to connect like, oh shit, like it's it's not meant to be easy, and it was hard, and I had to make lots of sacrifices to get there, and I had to be consistent with it, and it didn't happen overnight, and it took a long time, and you start to learn how to go, oh, wow, these other things in my life that feel so hard and challenging, oh, well, shit, I did that 100 pounds I lost. It took me two years and stuff like that. This whole thing, I this real estate license I got to study for for six months, all of a sudden these things, they seem so much more attainable because you've done something like that inside the gym. So there's, there's such an empowering piece to that too, even if it's not a translating into like being stronger in the world, just that, hey, I did something really fucking hard that took a long time that not a lot of people can do. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a daily challenge. It's hard and you grow and you get better. That's what exercise in, in fitness is, and it does it does make other challenges seem more attainable, or at least you can handle them. And so when you're empowered in life, you're less fearful. You're, you feel less of that out-of-control feeling, like I can't handle things. That's a scary kind of feeling to be in. In fact, that's probably one of the number one reasons why people feel anxious, is that they feel like they're not, they don't have the control or they can't accept 
you know, the challenges. Oh my God, that's too hard. I can't do it. Well, this is why we hate the messaging around the genetics thing so much, right? Because even though genetics play a massive role in, in all of our body types, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't control it. Yeah, course. giving those, giving that messaging out to the average person gives them an excuse to go, oh, well, I was born to be this way, so yeah. I'm not going to do anything about it. It's and not it's, the only card in your deck, right? And it's a, and it's a terrible message because then it do, it turns a lot of people off from mm -hmm. even pursuing this and giving them the opportunity to empower themselves. So I think that's one of the biggest things that we hate about that messaging yeah. is did that. you know that that like physical fitness uh is perceived to be more challenging than becoming super wealthy yeah the abs thing mm. remember we shared that study there's a study that says that it's it's more people it's more people are millionaires than have six packs yeah uh, or, or you know visible abs or whatever not saying that that's like some goal you need to attain who cares but people perceive it to be more challenging than than, than achieving lots of wealth because it's it is it's a very challenging thing. Now uh, we know as coaches, like you just if you follow the steps and you're consistent, everybody can achieve a great deal of fitness. Well, yeah, I can and get someone six pack abs a lot faster than I get somebody a million dollars. But if you, and that's why it's so empowering because you perceive it to be so like yeah. impossible. Yeah. And then you do it. Like how many times have you had clients that you train, especially older clients, right? People in their fifties, who after they're consistent, and they train with you for a year or two, and they come to you and they go, I. I've, th I feel better now than I felt oh, in my yeah. 20s. Mm -hmm. I am in better shape now than it was. I can't believe what a difference. And they're 50, right? They have all their genetics and age is working against them now, and yet they feel better than they did when they were in their 20s. So that empowering part uh, can't be overstated. Here's something that's really cool. And this is, again, this is also backed by studies. Uh, let's, let's talk about the physical feelings of a hard workout. Uh, and, I, and trust me, this is all going to connect to, you know, kind of anxiety in particular, right? You're working out hard. What happens? You sweat. Your palms sweat. Your body sweats. You feel pain. Things burn. Muscles hurt. Your heart is beating really fast. Mm -hmm. You know what that also sounds like? Anxiety. Anxiety attack. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds a lot. In fact, the physical effects of hard exercise are very closely, I mean, they almost mirror the physical effects of anxiety. So why is this important? If you train your body regularly and you're exercising on your own or in the gym and you're getting these physical feelings of anxiety, but you're connecting them to something that's positive, right. something that feels good, something that's empowering. This is improving my fitness. I think I enjoy this. This is cool. You develop a, you change your relationship to the physical feelings of anxiety, fear, and pain, yeah. especially pain. When I work out, I've been doing this for years. I feel no less pain than a beginner. I feel the mm -hmm. same pain that they feel when we work out. I might take, I have to, might have to do more weight and train harder, but I feel the same pain. But that pain doesn't bother me like it may a beginner because I have a different relationship to it. Yeah. I actually like or enjoy that. It still hurts. So when I say enjoy it, it's not like this pleasurable type feeling, but rather I have a different relationship to it. Well, I love that association because also they've they've talked about that as being uh, when you get excited. It's a very similar pathway yep. uh, to uh, you know it, in parallel to that having anxiety. It's just uh, what you attach to that either being negative or positively associated towards mm -hmm. that. And so, you know, to think about that as going through an exercise, you do, you know, have those same, you generate the heart rate, you generate, uh, you know, your, your body temperature can kind of come up a bit. Like you, you get all these same uh, phys physical feelings behind it. Uh, it's just that now if we relate that more in a positive direction, you can fuel that uh, towards a better outcome. Well, it also just gets you comfortable being in that position. I mean, how many times have you guys had somebody with severe anxiety talk about that part of what creates the severe anxiety is just that bit of anxiousness. They become anxious about being anxious. The, the fear it's, of it. Yes. Totally. And then it's like yeah. they get a little, because we all get a little bit of anxiety or angst, right? right? Mm -hmm. But a, a lot of times when you feel that, you calm it down, you control it, or you're, you're, at, you're at ease in it still. Where somebody who's not used to that feeling, and this is foreign, they get they start to get a a anxiety and anxious, and then they it, it compounds because then they're anxious about being anxious, and well, then it be, turns into this complete nervous breakdown. Or they have yeah. a different relationship to it, to where they maybe had a panic attack one time, which is which is terrifying. Right now they feel the beginnings mm -hmm. of a panic attack. In their mind, it's the beginnings of a panic. Attack. Maybe it's just mild anxiety. But because now they fear the panic attack, they actually start to fuel. It's a it's a it's a positive feedback loop. It's no different than when you take a a microphone and a speaker and you put the microphone to the speaker and it makes that loud noise. 
that's what's called a positive feedback loop, right? The, the noise from the mic goes to the speaker, but then the speaker feeds the mic and it goes louder and louder and louder. Mm-hmm. This is part of the reason why anxiety can be so bad. The same thing with pain. You know, if, if you, you, look, you talk about people who have been under severe physical trauma and they have a poor relationship with physical pain because it reminds them of the trauma. Well, when you're exercising and you're causing physical pain to yourself, but you're under control of it, you, I'm doing the reps myself. I can stop when I want, but also I'm getting more fit. I feel better. I'm stronger. It really does change your relationship to that pain. This is, again, one of those things that you can't, I think, uh, overstate. Um, here's a huge positive with exercise that you cannot say about medications. Medications tend to develop, people tend to develop a tolerance to them. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon where you take a medication and it works, but then over time you need more of it. And then over time you need more of it. And then you got to go to the doctor and say, it's not working for me anymore. And they change you to a different medication yeah. that maybe is a little stronger or works a Adderall, little bit differently. Adderall, Vicodin, all of those. They, it, all, they all lead to higher doses. That's you, right. Here's the beauty of exercise. You don't develop a quote unquote tolerance to it. It's not like you do it and then you do in the sense that you get more fit, but the tolerance you develop from exercise is actually a great thing. Getting more fit is not the same thing as your body not responding to medication like it used to. Because as you up the dose of medication, so you up the potential side effects and the you know the, the fact that you're dependent on them, well, exercise isn't like that. The beauty of as you up the dose of exercise, you continue to up the dose of benefits you get from and, it. And, and lower the effect, the, yeah. the negative side effects. Yes, exactly. It's, so. it's, a, it's a beautiful... This is why studies suggest that exercise is long-term better for things like mild to moderate depression. Because when they do these long studies, they show that initially it's about as good, but then as they go longer and longer, they go, well, it looks like it might actually start outperforming. Because, and here's the next part, it gets better over time. And it always gets better over time. This is the beauty. I've been working out for twenty over 25 years, and my workouts are better now than they were before. Not because I'm stronger, not because I'm more fit. I was stronger in my 30s. I was, you know, all that stuff. Not because of that, but just the, all the other benefits of exercise yeah. are even better for me now. You meet somebody in their 70s or 80s who's been exercising consistently for decades, and they love the exercise more now than they did when they were, you know, in their youth. It just well, gets get, better over time. You get better at what you do. You get you start to recognize the the movements and the the types of workouts that that benefit you the most. You also it's like putting money away as an investment. We've talked about this recently with you've done 10 years of building muscle, like it gets easier. It yeah. does. It gets easier to sustain. I mean, you shared that study recently. It takes one ninth of the uh, the effort and workout to maintain uh, what it took to get to that place. So yep. it's, you know, yeah. you do all this hard work to 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 get this uh, to this place. I don't have to do as much to maintain right. that. The so. muscle memory effects, yes. right? You, you're able to kind of get right back in to receive the benefits a little more. Uh, you know, like, like soon in terms of like, I can jump back in after like being out for a while because I put all of that work in over mm-hmm. time. That's a bank that I've been building that I can now I can just receive the benefits from it. Yeah. You know, one component too, of kind of working through, uh, you know, anxiety and depression, I think for a lot of people is there's, there tends to be a, there's a component of acceptance that once they achieve a certain level of acceptance, things tend to get better. So maybe you're anxious or depressed because, you lost a loved one or your, your job isn't what you thought or, you know, something, right? And you're just, it just bothers you. And at some point, hopefully you get to the point of acceptance and then a lot of that pain kind, kind of goes away. Or maybe you just accept the fact that you're just not as happy as most people. I mean, there are different baselines for individuals and you may just accept that and that takes the edge off of it because you're no longer judging how you feel. So acceptance is a big part of that. Well, here's the beauty of exercise in the long term. It is a wonderful acceptance teacher. Here's how, okay? Initially, when people first start working out, they have some kind of aesthetic or physical goal. I want to look like the cover of the girl. I want to look like the girl on the cover of the magazine, or I want to look that like that super ripped dude on Baywatch or the bodybuilder or whatever. And they train, 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 train. And at some point they realize I'll never look like that person because not only does that person work out a lot and whatever, maybe they do things that are unhealthy, but they also have like 
these crazy, like, look good genetics that I just don't have. Or they're 6'3 and I'm 5'10. Yeah, or, you know, whatever. I'm a little thicker, they're a little thinner. Yeah. He's got really wide shoulders, mine are narrow, her hips look differently than mine. But you continue the exercise, you know what ends up happening? You accept yourself. Oh, I'm never going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't care. I really don't care. I accept my body and I'm continuing to train it. That acceptance goes a long way. I mean, you talk to people who've been working out for decades and more often than not, when you talk to somebody who's been working out for two months, you get a lot of non-acceptance. No, I want to look this way. I don't like my body. Talk to someone who's been working out for 30, 40 years. They accept their body. They accept themselves. Like, yeah, this is how I look and this is who I am. I'm comfortable with it. Um, and you get that more often than not. I also think that training for a long period of time like that, it starts to teach you to to train because you love yourself. You know, you talk about yes. this a lot mm -hmm. on the show about, you know, learning to do that, to to exercise because, because you love yourself, not because you hate the way you look or the way you are. And that's there's a bit of a learning curve there. It's not an overnight thing. It's not totally. like somebody who comes yeah. in who doesn't like who they are, doesn't like the way they look, trains a week, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, now I'm doing it because I love myself. But over time, this is what you get. That's the part of the acceptance that I see here is that mm -hmm. when you've been training for a long period of time, you start to make the connections to all the other things that we're talking yeah. about, yeah. and you start well, to I'm train. I'm a better person when I'm doing this consistently. Yeah, and you transition away from being this person who was so focused on the original goal that brought you into fitness, and now you're doing it for other reasons. Mm -hmm. That's part of that acceptance. I'm not doing this because I want to look like that cover anymore. Regardless if I can or can't, who cares? It doesn't even matter anymore. Now I'm here because I love myself, because I want to take care of take care of myself and I deserve to be healthier. I deserve to be better. I deserve to be a better version of myself. So that's why I'm doing it. I think that has a lot to do with the how it teaches acceptance over totally. time. Totally. And, and again, if you look at studies on people who exercise uh, for long term on a regular basis, they tend to do better in almost every aspect of life. They tend to be happier in their relationships. Of course, they tend to be healthier physically. That's that's a, a given. But they also tend to be more successful in business. They tend to be happier in the relationships. They tend to suffer less from these low bouts of depression that all of us can go through. The lows are not as low. They tend to have less you know, bouts of anxiety. It's just, it helps everything. It is it almost like, and I, it, it, minus the spiritual aspect, I don't, I don't want to call it a spiritual practice, but in many ways it's got some of the benefits of spiritual practices. Um, so there you have it. Uh, you know, you may be working out because you want to look better and you want to get stronger, build muscle and burn body fat, which is great. But what you may not realize is the most profound effects of exercise are the mental and psychological ones. Look, if you like our information, head over to Mind Pump Media, excuse me, mindpumpfree.com. At mindpumpfree.com, we have lots of guides that can help you train your body, improve your health, change how you look, make yourself more fit and more healthy. Again, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal, and Adam is at mindpumpadam.